Allie, thank you very much. And Robert, thank you for joining us today. Um, I think you've probably heard a bit from the Bears folks, but every year, each of the 32 NFL teams, uh, media chapters select a player or players, actually coaches and, and uh, media folks are, are not media, but uh, PR folks are uh, nominees as well. But we select a player or players as the good guy of the year, the, the player who um, does his most to cooperate with us and, and not only to, to visit with us whenever possible, but to, to be as helpful as you can in your comments. And uh, this year was kind of special in a lot of ways. We had nine players and two coaches receive votes. We had four finalists amongst the four finalists. Everybody received multiple votes and the vote ended up in a tie. Uh, between you and Tayshawn Gibson. And the award this year is even that much more special to us because uh, tragically we lost one of our best, probably our best last week, Jeff Dickerson, uh, who had been a member of our group for 20 years and, and was absolutely the definition uh, of good guy. And so we have renamed the award, the Chicago Media Jeff Dickerson Good Guy Award. And it's my privilege to present it uh, to you and Tayshawn this year. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's a humbling honor. Um, you know, well, I'm just doing my job when it, when it comes to interviews, I guess. So, well, thank you all for, for nominating and honoring me for this. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Hub. Awesome, we can go ahead and get started with questions for you then. So first question, Dan Leader. Robert, sincere thank you for all your help this year. We really enjoyed it. It's been good getting to know you in person most of the year until these last couple of weeks. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to ask you, with the way the defense has surged here in the last three weeks with a lot of moving parts and, and, and a lot of things to deal with, what do you make of this, this strong closing stretch that you guys have put together the last few weeks? Um, that, well, that we're finally kind of playing up to our standards. Um, you know, we've been any kind of inconsistent on the year. Now we just, you know, Put ourselves in a very terrible position, but you know, as a as a as a man, people with pride, we got to at least finish out strong and you know give ourselves something positive going into next year. And then Tayshawn gave me a homework assignment. He he said to ask you who you were blocking on his interception return. He wanted to know why nobody cleaned up Mike Glennon for him. <laughs> hey, look, when when you intercept the ball, don't run into the fire. You're supposed to go the opposite <laughs> way. Uh, <laughs> Well, when you get another one this week, I, I, I'm going to see if I can search out a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Mark Potash. Hey, Robert. Uh, also, uh, thanks again for uh, um, for all your help this year. We uh, we appreciate it. Uh, just curious about, uh, I don't know if we'll get a chance to talk to you after the game or whatever. Uh, you know, How much different will your offseason be? You know, Last year at this time, or in the offseason, you had a really you had a lot of things to, to deal with, uh, uh, as far as you know coming back and stuff like that. This year, you're coming off a great year. Will will it be any different mentally and physically uh, for you in, in this offseason as you look ahead to to, to 2022? No, I think I'm kind of in a, in a sense approach it the same. You know, allow myself one to get away from football and just kind of decompress and just live life normally. Then. Um, after that, like, you know, I've been saying all year, just stay, you know, spiritually and mentally happy and a good place. So whatever I got to do to do that, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to do. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the off season again, we all train. It's just more staying in a good place. So, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I'm be on the same sort of regimen. Robert, you're such a low key guy. Do you do you reward yourself uh, for a season like this in in your off season? Do you do anything, buy anything? What what do you you know? Do you celebrate? What do you what do you do once you <laughs> kind of get it, get to step back and see what you what you've actually done another good year? Um, I mean, yeah, again, I don't. I mean, I'm not going to make a trip for myself or having a a, a good year. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I look at the stats and of course I you know pat myself on the back, but. I think that's about about as far as I go as you know as far as buying you know buying a new car or taking a trip across the world for a good season that's that's really not me I'm you now I'd rather disappear into the woods go into the country land and you know go fishing or something that's that's my type of speed this session Larry Mayor hey Robert congratulations on both the sack record and also the good guy award um 
when we talk to your teammates and coaches and we kind of obviously sense that you are a low key guy, you don't talk a lot, but yet in these media sessions, you're always very open, honest and reflective. And I think that's why we all appreciate uh, you doing these. Is this something the way you've always been? And is there anybody with the Rams that maybe you followed their lead or gave you advice about how to speak with the media when you nah. came into the league? No, I've always been a, you know, a quiet guy. Um, yeah, and there's that just my personality. And as far as you know, when I have to talk to the media, um, you know, I, I try to be as honest as I can when I talk to people. I have absolutely no follow-up for that. <laughs> Next question, Andrew Sigelman. See, I got a few of y'all off guard, I see. <laughs> Rob, Rob, if you were to get a sack this week or two, what would it mean to either equal the personal record or, or to surpass it, especially given where things were last year? Uh, I mean, it's been kind of cool. I mean, that was uh, what, eight years ago, and, you know, I guess I can show people I, you know, still got a little bit left in the tank. Um, I don't know. It's kind of cool, like I said, you know, being, like, again, eight years from that year, um, you know, that I'm back to that caliber type play. So, it's, uh, again, I, it's, it's humbling, but, you know, you got to get it first before I start talking about it. Do you have any doubts about whether you could get back to that or something close to it? I'm sorry? Do you have any doubts about whether you could get back to somewhere close to that level? No, I never had doubts. I mean, honestly, that was those are my expectations of myself. Um, and like any, any, anybody else, you got to be consistent on doing it. And you know, that starts with being available um, out there on the field. Last question, Dan Reeder. Rob, I think you can market some T-shirts with that expression. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> when we talked to uh, Travis after the game on Sunday, he seemed very grateful for the opportunity to, to sort of learn from you and Khalil. I'm curious what you've uh, observed of him in the two years you've been together in terms of his willingness to be a sponge and then obviously your willingness to, to kind of pay, pay your uh, knowledge forward. Um. I mean, from last year to this year, you know, he, he, he's grown a lot. And and him, I guess, again, being in his second year, he's a lot more, seems a lot more comfortable, a lot more confident in himself. Um, well, when he hears a play call, that way when he goes out there, he can play fast and start making plays. So I think that's the one of the biggest things. And, um, you know, he's definitely a hard worker. You know, once, once perfection seeks it, but – you know, nobody's perfect. So I think that's a few of the, the things. And of course, once you start making one play here and there, you just you build your own confidence. And, you know, hopefully he builds on that and, and you know, show people what, what he's capable of.